everyone, Alexa here from the blog, theduvalhomestead.com. And today I'm taking you along for an entire week as I cook different from scratch, cozy fall meals for my family. Cooking is something I've always genuinely enjoyed doing, but I've never felt quite as satisfied as when I see my family, especially my children, enjoying my meals. I like to try new recipes and sometimes they work out because I get lucky and other times I just practice a certain cooking method over and over enough times that I just grow to become good at it. I try to cook with as many farm fresh ingredients as I can. And of course that means cooking what's in season. We don't have a lot growing in our garden in our little homestead right now. We do have chickens, so we have eggs year round, which is great because we eat several eggs a day. But other than that, I just try to pick up vegetables and other food that is locally grown to us, which is pretty easy. It's basically available in the stores nearby. We do have a lot of local farms in our area. Okay, so today I'm going to make a chicken pot pie in the cast iron. This is a new recipe to me, but what I'm gonna be doing is combining a bunch of ingredients that I already have that I just need to use up. I have some corn in the freezer that is totally fresh, it's frozen, but I mean, we just got it picked like last week. It's corn season. I'm gonna be using some green peas that I need to use up in the freezer. I have a bunch of leftover chicken. Every time I make chicken, I just peel the meat off and then save it in the freezer for another time. So we're gonna get that used up because it's been sitting for a while. I think I'll also throw together an einkorn pie crust, which I just put a recipe for on my blog, so hopefully that one will work. I'm gonna make it up as I go, but I'm gonna use the cast iron skillet, saute the vegetables and the meat in the skillet, and then add the crust over the top and bake it, and we'll see how it turns out. I'm always looking for new dinner recipes and easy one pot meals, and I think this will do it aside from the pie part. We'll see how difficult that ends up being. We'll see how many kids wake up during this video. I'm new to the world of two children and getting them both down at the same time. So there will probably be an entrance at some point of a baby or a toddler. The other thing I have to do while I'm in the kitchen is bake a loaf of sourdough bread. It's been a couple weeks since I have been doing bread regularly. I tried to keep up with the bread right after we had our baby and I kept up with it kind of, but I have not had bread in several days now, which is very unusual for me. So time to get a loaf in the oven. So we're gonna get that in the oven and then we'll start the chicken pot pie. As a new mom of another newborn, even though this is my second, I still find myself wearing the baby a lot and spending a lot of time nursing, putting the baby down, picking him up, putting him in the wrap, putting him down again, nursing. <laughs> over and over. So you're gonna see a little bit of that in this video as well. Of course, it's the best and having my kids around me every day is the one thing that I want more than anything. So because I'm not making a regular size pie, I'm gonna use my einkorn sourdough pie crust recipe, but cut it about one third down. So do about two thirds of the recipe. Again, kind of experimenting here, but it can't really go wrong because it's not really a pie. So I'm just gonna put this on the top to make a top crust. I'm gonna start with about a half a cup of active sourdough starter. And I'm also not letting this ferment for a very long time. So it's kind of a, not exactly fermented sourdough recipe. It's just using discard, which is fine. A cup of fine corn flour, a little over a cup, and about a half a cup of regular alcohol flour. Salt, and a stick of butter cut into cubes. Okay, pull that up. Adding in anywhere from three to five tablespoons of ice water. I did about six tablespoons. And I'm gonna put that in the fridge in a plastic bag. And meanwhile, I'm going to start the rest of the filling. Some butter in my skillet here, and it's definitely very hot. I'm going to add some chicken. Come together quickly. It's already cooked. Transferring the chicken to another bowl so I can use the cast iron for the veggies. About a half a cup of peas, maybe three quarter cup. Really enjoy freezing peas. They freeze very well. Hi, look at that. Go ahead and add my garlic. And some of my corn. This is the best corn, super fresh. And of course, more butter. Adding, making the roux now with a little bit of pine corn flour. Thicken it up. This is fresh raw milk 
with the cream skimmed at the top, so it's gonna be very thick and creamy. Herbs, I didn't have a chance to chop them, so they're whole. Rosemary, thyme, sage. And we're going to cover this and get for like 10 minutes on low and let it thicken and then check it. We want this to be nice and creamy. And add the chicken back in. So I really didn't measure much here, but I'd say about a cup of chicken, half a cup peas, half a cup corn, rosemary, sage, thyme, freshly ground pepper, salt, carrots, bone broth, milk, and some cream. Okay. That rolled out and put on top of cast iron. I'm gonna put this over my chicken pot pie filling. Pretty good. Just kind of pinching it around. This is like a very fast version of what a fancy crust would look like, but all I know is it's gonna be delicious, so that is what I will be thinking about when I'm eating it. Crack one of these eggs we just got from our chicken coop today. This is one of my favorite things to do on any kind of crust, is to get this egg spread on top. A couple little pockets here for breathing. And put that in the oven. Probably about 20 minutes, we'll see. Tell the truth. Whoa, can you take that out? All right, baked it for about 15 minutes at 375 and it looks perfectly done. Cannot wait to dive into this, it smells incredible. I was watching a cooking show and the chef said something that I thought was so good, which is that good chef, the best chefs out there are not ones that are perfect at combining ingredients or perfect at making recipes or even love eating food. The best chefs are the ones that love cleaning dishes. <laughs> I thought that was so perfect because you actually spend more time cleaning than actually eating your food. The kitchen is a work of art. It kind of has a rhythm of its own, I find, and you really have to keep up at it. And I feel like I have done a good job of that. And I know the rhythm of our kitchen. I know what needs to come out of the fridge at what time of day, and then what order to put things back in the fridge. I know when dishes need to be cleaned. I know what pockets of the day I have to finish that cleanup or else I will get too far behind. And then we'll have like a backup in the kitchen, which can be really, really stressful, especially when everyone's hungry and, or there's not even enough room in the sink to put dirty dishes. That's probably the worst thing. So come on into my kitchen and let's get cooking. Day is starting with a grocery haul. Every Tuesday we do a big grocery pickup that lasts us all week. And I also run any other errands. I try to get all the errands done on one day of the week, so I don't have to leave the house again for an entire week, unless it's to do something more fun, like with the kids. But today was grocery day, so I'm just going to put the groceries in the fridge and then continue with the cleanup that I try not to have to do during nap time, but yet I still have to do again today. So I'm gonna do more cleanup and then I will get to the recipe. I collect pumpkins every time I go to the grocery store. We are having my family over for dinner tonight, and so I wanna cook something a little bit nicer than I normally do. And I really wanna use pumpkin. And so I was thinking, what can I do that uses pumpkin puree? And I thought of doing a creamy pumpkin carrot pasta sauce. I shared this recipe last year on my blog, and it is a huge hit. It was especially a huge hit with my baby at the time, who's now a toddler. We will see if she likes it again this year. She loved it last year, so much so that I made it in bulk amounts and then just froze it in these little tiny jars so I could easily pull it out and give it to her. Now she's, you know, over the age of two, a little more picky. We'll see if she still likes it, but I know that I will love it and so will my family. But first I'm going to get some pumpkin seeds going. We carved pumpkins over the weekend and if you are like us, you carve pumpkins and then you take the seeds and you don't waste those because they are so good. They are really rich in vitamins and nutrients and so definitely cook those up if you have pumpkin seeds. So first I'm going to strain the pumpkin seeds. I gathered them over the weekend, threw them in the fridge because I didn't have time to make them at that moment and strain them under some water, get all the pumpkin chunks off and then let them dry. This is a tip that I just recently learned. I used to just pop them in the oven, but what happens is you kind of burn the seed because there's so much moisture 
moisture in there that it just ends up steaming the pumpkin the pumpkin seeds instead of actually roasting them so I'm gonna let them sit overnight on my counter on a towel and actually as I'm doing this I'm going to change that towel out for a paper towel because these are so wet that they just soaked the towel immediately and I don't want them sitting in the water so I'm gonna change out the paper towel probably one more time before bed let them sit air out and then roast them tomorrow so for the pumpkin carrot pasta sauce you're going to need olive oil an onion chopped carrots four cloves of garlic half a cup homemade pumpkin puree or canned is fine too I'm using canned today because I have not made pumpkin puree for the season yet bone broth cream cheese parmesan cheese heavy cream salt pepper and sage oh and cinnamon I'm reading from my blog right here where the recipe is you can get this recipe and print it off in a free printable on the blog at ddbellhomestead.com or just search creamy pumpkin pasta sauce on Google and you'll find it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get a pot of water boiling on the stove for the pasta. Since I'm using that pot for the water, I'm going to use my Dutch oven for the ingredients. Once that's heated, you add the onions and carrots until the carrots are cooked down. And then about 10 minutes, and then add your garlic. And then add your pumpkin puree and bone broth and combine that with an immersion blender. This is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. It really combines things quickly. Your pumpkin puree, about a half a cup, and the bone broth. Okay, that's looking nice and thick, and now I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients and the spices and call this a day. Definitely made a big mess in the stove area here. Not measuring this cream cheese. Baby's waking up, so I gotta hurry. Salt, not measuring anything at this point. Of course, sage and Parmesan cheese. Oh, that's gonna be so good. I'm gonna serve this recipe with salmon because that is still very much in season here. In fact, it is so much in season that it is on sale, which is one of my favorite times of year. And we're talking king wild caught salmon, not previously frozen and not farm raised. That runs anywhere about $30 per pound, which we don't buy. But at this time of the year, I'm getting it for $18 a pound, which I do buy. So I'm buying a lot of it. So I'm gonna be making this with a nice king salmon filet, also going to be adding asparagus on the side. Very nutritious, filling, delicious. Everything about this meal is my favorite. I'm using a nice einkorn fusilli pasta. Love einkorn flour for pasta. It's very nutrient dense, high in protein, and easy to make. I also get this on Amazon, so easy to buy. Putting the asparagus in the oven with olive oil, salt, and lemon. This is one of the few vegetables that I really like to buy all year round, but I don't know what the rule is on that. I, I like to buy things seasonally, but I love my asparagus all year, and it's good all year, at least where I'm at, so figure why not. I like to top it with some lemon. Roast in the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes. For the salmon, I've been doing it the same way for years and it works out perfect each time. Salmon's kind of hard to cook because you don't want to overcook it. So I rub it with olive oil with a food brush, sprinkle it with seasoning. Any seasoning will do. You can make your own with salt, pepper, garlic powder, a little bit of paprika, and some herbs. Or I use a Kinder's blend, that's basically the same thing. And then I add some lemon slices and a few chunks of butter, roast it at 375 for 12 minutes. I promise it comes out perfect every time. Okay, new day, new cooking hour. We did a little Play-Doh activity this morning and I got everyone down for a nap and I need to clean this up before we get going. Number one tip, always clean before you start something new. Also got some interesting pieces of dried rice that are just hanging out on the floor from lunchtime, so I'm gonna clean that up. Okay, definitely did not get around to the pumpkin seeds until tonight, so we're gonna go ahead and make them now. Okay, coming in here on the voiceover to talk about the pumpkin seeds because the house was very loud when I was doing this because it was in the evening time. So I just brushed them with an avocado oil and I think I did 375 for about 20 minutes, but you're gonna wanna watch them because they do burn quickly. And these actually did get a little bit burnt. Like I said, the house was just very busy this evening and I was kind of rushing to get them done, but they turned out really great. They taste amazing in salads and just as a snack. So you can't go wrong here. Seasonings I used were salt, pepper, garlic, powder, onion powder, paprika, 
and I think a little bit of cumin. I was just throwing these together fairly quickly. Okay, today we're gonna make a Dutch baby pancake in the cast iron. This is basically a German pancake recipe. It's kind of a cross between a regular pancake and a crepe. It uses a lot of eggs, which I really like because I'm always trying to get my toddler to eat eggs. And I think she'll do it in the form of this pancake. So I'm really excited to give this a try. I'm gonna basically combine three eggs, two third cups milk, and two third cups einkorn flour. And that's the basic recipe, it's very easy. And then I'm gonna add some little sweet and spice, a little bit of sugar, salt, and pumpkin spice to make this for fall. I like using einkorn flour. It is a non-hybridized grain, it's higher in protein and lower in gluten, so it's a lot easier to digest for many people. It's also just more sustainable when you go to eat the food, you actually have more protein. So I'm gonna be using that. I love using einkorn flour whenever I can. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees, and I'm gonna bake it for about 15, 20 minutes. Start by preheating the cast iron on medium heat. I'm gonna combine these ingredients in the blender, pour it in, and then bake it. And I'll make it pretty at the end, topping it with some powdered sugar and some fresh strawberries. I love when I can get up early for everyone, except for the baby. He's up, but he's so easy. And make breakfast. My least favorite thing is when everyone's up and everyone's hungry and I have no food. As you know, if you're a parent, that's the worst. So. Getting up early is key. The only problem is I get up early and then I have so many things I wanna do that I need to be like, no, breakfast first. <laughs> I'm using my Nutribullet here. Love this tool for smoothies every morning. Just pulled these eggs out of the chicken coop yesterday. This is some raw milk, good stuff. It's even got cream in it, of course. I just spilled that all over the floor. So it's going to be nice and rich for this. Took that milk and eggs out early this morning when I first got up to come to room temperature while I was taking care of the baby. Got a multitask around here. If I didn't multitask, nothing would actually ever get done. Okay, so adding all these to the blender. Um, I tend to use one measuring cup all of the time, like just one cup and then guess where the line is for two thirds. So this recipe could be modified because I'm not actually measuring exactly. That looks good to me. Um, my research before doing this recipe, I see that you want the batter to be pretty thin, so we're gonna mix this up, see how it looks, and we can always add more milk. A little bit of sugar. I think I'll throw in a dash of vanilla too. This is homemade vanilla. Finally, it's ready. It's been sitting on my counter for six months. It smells incredible. Pumpkin pie spice is one of the best things to have on hand in the fall time. You just, it's already done for you. All the cinnamon, clove, so good. Running around in circles in the kitchen. The Nutribullet. That's looking good to me. Gonna put some butter in the skillet. Never shy with the butter. And I'm just gonna pour that in. Ready. And stick that in my preheated oven. <clears throat> Good job, little man. We'll do 15 minutes to see how that works and then do extra time if we need to. Okay, moment of truth. Whoa. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's fun. It exploded. Sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar on here. Okay, come here, come climb up here. Here it is. All right now it's hot, so you don't wanna touch it. Wow, look at that. And don't touch the pan, the pan is hot, okay? Butter on here for you. How is it? Good. Clearly this recipe was a huge hit with my toddler. Well, thank you so much for joining me for these cozy fall recipes. I hope they gave you some inspiration you and yourself? I appreciate you just popping in my kitchen with me and coming into my home for our family mm -hmm. meal time. Oh, wow. As always, if you're brand new to my channel, Such please baby. hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Every week I post a new video on farm to table recipes and homemade natural living. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.